Hi viewers, Ben with SkyFi Audio in Glenrock, New Jersey. It's September 6th, beginning of the month, and once again we have a lot of really cool stuff to show you guys. So I'm going to do a walkthrough of the shop and go over all of the new products that came in and cover some interesting info about each of them. So stick around for that. If you like any of the products that you see here, you can visit us at skyfiaudio.com and make sure to sign up for our email list as well if you want to get notifications every Friday of the new stuff that's coming in. All right, so let's start in bay one. This is a set of very unique speakers, Illumina Magister Mark II. It uses a old school design called a field coil where the main driver here is actually suspended by a DC bias voltage. So the speakers get connected to this little power supply down here and you basically, with adjustments here, can get variable damping and, and things like that. So it's a very, very cool design. This is the, the brand down here. We're also testing this Debye amplifier. Has this external volume control, which is, which is kind of neat. It's wireless. This can be configured for moving coil, moving magnet, phono. It has streaming. It's kind of just like an all-in-one class D amplifier. It's um, attracting a lot of fingerprints. It's right now it's covered in this plastic here, but these polish up really nice. Very cool to look at. All right, let's move over to the photo area. I've got some little items prepped here. This thing's really neat. This is a battery powered phono stage from Nagra. It can either run off of a nine volt battery or a external power supply ranging from seven to 10 volts. And it comes with these little load PCBs so you can insert and change the loading. Really neat piece, very well built. This here is an Adcom GFS3 speaker selector. This is a SkyFi bestseller. Whenever we post these, they sell almost immediately. It's really great if you like experimenting with speakers. And they have a built-in uh, load resistor and you can toggle in and out this protection, which kind of helps match the impedance in case you're uh, combining a couple speakers and, and, and the load's gonna drop to a level that your amplifier doesn't like. So a very useful tool if you like comparing speakers. And we don't normally cover cables in these videos, but this is a special one, so I wanted to give it a little shout out. So this is a RCA to KMAC cable uh, from Madrigal. So this is like an official Levinson cable that looks like it was terminated um, by Sun Audio. But this is a nice cable to have if you have a Levinson amplifier that you want to interface with a um, with a different brand preamp, or if you have a Levinson preamp that only has KMAC inputs and you want to feed a CD player or a streamer or something into it. We just had one of these little guys come in. We don't often get these used. This is a Macintosh MA252. Small uh, hybrid integrated, so it has a, a tube preamp stage and a 100 watt per channel into eight ohm solid state output stage. Moving over to the test rig right now, we are doing a stress test on a Jadi DAC. This is an all tube DAC. This is the power supply here. Take a look at the build quality in here. This, the stuff that Jadi makes is just fantastic. It looks like all of their PCBs are handmade to a very high standard. The power supply here is again, a hybrid type design. So this has a solid state power supply for the DAC, but all of the tubes are DC heated. And then this is the B plus for the tube output stage of the DAC. So you have independent power supplies for the digital to analog conversion that's happening and the analog output buffer. Can't get a very good look inside of here, but we do have four vacuum tubes in here. This is single ended or balanced output, and it can take three different digital inputs, AES, optical, and coax. Let's move over to the island where we have a lot of Mac this month. A lot of new Mac came in, a lot of stuff got done being serviced. So let's, uh, let's start over here at the end and we'll work our way around.
All right, the first piece is a C47. So this has MM and MC phono inputs. It also has a built-in DAC. So this is kind of a full-featured, smaller uh, profile preamp for Macintosh. This here is a C2200 from Mac. It uses a total of eight vacuum tubes. So this is, this is an all tube design. Also with a phono input. The lighting on these um, over the years can fade and become uh, distorted in color. We've replaced, we've done an extensive servicing on this one, replacing the vacuum fluorescent display and the meter, meters themselves, meter housings, and the filters that go inside. So this is as close to a factory color as you can get on this C2200. This one turned out really, really nice. This just came in yesterday, this MA6600. Integrated amps, especially for Mac, don't last long here. So if you see this one pop up, jump on it, it's gonna go quick. Another MX121, this one has everything with it except for the box. We have got the box on order, so this will be a complete set, but this has the, uh, the microphone stand, the setup mic, the remote, the manual, the whole work. So if you're looking for a uh, full complete set for an MX121 AV processor, this might be a good unit for you. This is really neat. This is an MR78 that is pretty close to new old stock. The serial number on the outside of the box matches the unit. I'm not gonna go into this in full detail now because we'll do a separate video on the unboxing of this but it has all the original packaging, um, the mounting template for wall mounting and all that cool stuff. So this will be an interesting one to look at. This is an MR77. We were pleasantly surprised when we opened this one up to find the signature of uh, Richard Modafferi in it. So this is a, a Modafferi serviced piece. The alignment on this was very good. Just did some uh, touch up on, the, on the, uh, the dial glass, a fresh cleaning on the dial glass. Lamps look really nice on this one. This is an MX113. I think we've showed this, sorry, MX112. We've shown this one before. This is part of that equipment that came out of a famous recording studio. So this is ready for market and will be listed soon. Here's another one that you're gonna wanna jump on right away if you've been looking for one of these. This is a BDP-105D Darby. So if you're in the market for a very good disc player, this is pretty much the one to get uh, for uh, for Blu-ray, this won't do UHD, but it'll do DVD, audio, Blu-ray, CD, SACD. And this thing is working really, really well. Have the remote with that. And actually the original box too. So this is box of manuals. So that's a complete set on the 105D. Little Lin tuner. Really, really cool AccuPhase. This is an AccuPhase A30. This is th only 30 watts but it's biased in class A. So this is 30 watts of class A power. And AccuPhase is one of my favorite Japanese manufacturers. The build quality on AccuPhase is second to none. Um, very, very nicely built unit and a great pairing for high efficiency speakers like um, Klipsch or Alltech or something like that. So if you're looking for a nice class A amplifier, um, this is a, a very good one to try out. This is another one of those Jotty tube DAX that's waiting on final testing. This is a Techniques SL1350. We're going to do a light servicing on this and this will be available for sale soon as one of our more affordable units. Some of you Mac gurus out there might be able to help us out on this one. This is a Macintosh case. I believe it's an L52 but it is a little bit different construction than what we're used to. I'm used to seeing a fiberboard bottom on here and this is plywood. So it's possible that this is a reproduction case, but whoever made this, whether it was sanctioned by Mac or not, did an excellent job. This is a super high quality cabinet, but it's, if it was a reproduction, it's built to the exact Macintosh style with better uh, quality wood. This is not a slant foot, this is a later version, so it uses the regular Macintosh feet, and these are actually official Mac feet. And the best part about this is this is a um, 14 and a half inch deep cabinet, and we had one set of the extra long 13 and a half inch pan locks left, so I mounted them in this cabinet. This can fit an MX 
uh, sorry, an MC2125 amplifier, which is really hard to get uh, pan locks for. So if you have one of those extra deep Macintosh components, this would be an excellent case to get. That does it for the island. Let's take a look at the other bays. So nothing has changed much in Bay 2 since the last time, but Bay 3 is going to get a big overhaul this month. So we just got in our first set of K-horns in American Walnut, and we're gonna be setting these up in Bay 3. So we got this bay kind of cleared out, and I just wanted to show you guys the system that we're planning here, and you can let us know in the comments if you think this will be a good pairing for the K-horns. So we're gonna run this awesome uh, modified techniques deck for our analog source. The reissue C22. So this is the, the current, uh, current offering for Mac for the C22. We're going to be powering the K horns with a current MC275. MPC500 down here for our power management and an MR89 tuner. So that's gonna be the setup for the K-Horns. We're gonna give that a shot. We'll probably add an MT5 or something like that uh, when we get one in. And then over here on the wall, this has been filling up. We have so much Mac right now. Really good stock of Mac. If you're interested in buying an amplifier, preamp, CD player, we have lots to offer at the moment. The thing I wanted to cover here is the MHT100. So I just finished doing a brand new piece of glass on this, an all new dial illumination, and replacing the switch mode power supply. So these MHT100s over the years, they will develop a failure in the, uh, the switch mode power supply module. So that's recommended service on these. I've done that on both of these units. But the reason I'm showing you the MHT100 is it occurred to me that this could be a pretty awesome setup if you're willing to do a little bit of experimentation with some Y cables. So this unit has pre-out main in for the amplifiers and it has a lot of amplifier channels. So technically what you could do is run this as a two channel piece and Y out of the left front and left right and power up, you know, I would do maybe three and three. So you could use three channels for left and three channels for right and triamp a set of speakers at 100 watts per channel. So something like we've got the XCS 200 speakers for Mac, that would be a good pairing with this. You could triamp that set of speakers with this power amplifier and um, it has a built-in tuner. So kind of a, you know, a modern revamp of a vintage surround receiver because they gave us this pre-out main in flexibility, it could be a, a pretty pr powerful triamp system. Uh, we also got a couple more MC7270 service than done. That's one of our best selling power amplifiers for Mac because of the big meters and the, and the reliability. Uh, let's head over to the, to the repair area and see what's coming up in the queue. So I showed this Mac 1500 on the last video. We're in the final stretch on this. We're just waiting on a new set of tubes to come in and this one will be ready to rock. So we're excited. This is our first Mac 1500 receiver. And once this is done, we'll have a 1500, 1700, and 1900 in stock. Um, so we'll have most of the early Macintosh receiver allotment here in the shop. We've got another 1900 here. This is just waiting on a, um, a tone, tone circuit rebuild. What else is new down here? We've got a 2105 that we're doing a new piece of glass on and all of the service bolts and stuff. Big Macintosh MC207 power amplifier, working great, just needs new glass. So this happens from time to time. These things are so heavy that in transit, if something comes and hits one of these knobs too hard, it will spider out the glass. So we'll get that replaced and this thing will be ready to go. And that's about it. Oh, is this one done, Fernando? Yep. So this one will be getting listed soon. The Pioneer RT909. And then I'm going to do a walk up front. We're also working on a restoration on a really cool Nakamichi deck, the ZX, what is it, 1000 ZXL. So this one will be available for sale, hopefully sometime this fall. So that's about it for the September new arrivals. Thanks again for stopping by the channel and giving us a look. If anything in this video caught your eye, remember to visit us at skyfiaudio.com and sign up for our weekly email blast. Thanks again, guys. See you next time.